We're going to start like it's brand new. Welcome to the show. This is Jacob Israel. I'm so happy that you've tuned in to this amazing out of this world crazy broadcast. That's right. There's Black Adam. Uh, there you see Namor yeah, from the sea. And of course, we got a blood moon coming. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. Things going on over there at the pond. Occupy Mars. What's below Elon's shirt? Do you see that? Because Mars is the god of war. Holy macaroni, this is an exciting one. An exciting show. It's no wonder that we had so many technical difficulties to begin with. Hopefully, I fixed all the audio issues and everything else. But who knows? Because reality isn't real. That's right. I don't know if you, uh, you caught this. I've been wanting to talk about this for a little while. But I think it goes without saying... That today, it feels like nothing is real. It feels like we're in some kind of a, a kooky simulation. And wouldn't that be something if the ideas behind quantum mechanics and quantum theory and all of this stuff, you know, Schroeder's cat and uh, whether, you know, your belief makes things happen, the observer principle, wouldn't it be wild if we kind of co-create reality? That's what they're, they're saying in this article here. Do you notice what the uh, guy's holding in his hand? That's right. It looks like a trident, doesn't it? Interesting. Psyche. It's all strange. But if that was the case, like if we had some kind of great creative power within us, like say, I don't know, like God created us and gave us this power because it's written in the scriptures that all things are for us. That's right. For Adam made everything for Adam. Wouldn't it be interesting if the powers that be found a way to get everybody to collectively think the worst and to think the same and to be stuck in like a, a fear-based mindset where you can never get out of the box and you're just willing to be a slave? Yeah, sign me up. I'll do this. I'll do that. A lot of weird news going on. Looks like we're, we may be faced with some other issues down the road with the uh, things that they're just approving. But we're not going to talk about that yet. We're going to get into something else. Speaking of that trident, do you know what was discovered? Because we've talked a lot about the trident on the show, Poseidon, right? The Poseidon adventure, which we're all on. On the last couple of shows, we've talked about soon am I, like tsunami, but soon am I, kind of like Christ rising. A lot of people are worried about some kind of a great tsunami or some kind of a great flood that's coming. A red flood, if you will. Interesting. It's also interesting that archaeologists have actually found the fabled Poseidon Temple. Can you believe that? Well, I can't believe genius by faith. Wow. Happy rising, meatball. I love it. <laughs> You're appreciated, too. That was nice of you in the super chat. I appreciate all of you in the super chat. Thank you for the things that you do. And thank you for coming back. So, yes, they, they discovered this thing. And it's, it's kind of a big deal, Poseidon, because, you know, at the same time this is all going down, we have, you know, we also have Black Panther, the, uh, the remake. Wakanda, forever, coming back. It's going to break a lot of people's hearts because of, of course, uh, you know, Chadwick was just such a, just a, such a great actor and such a loss to uh, the community. A lot of people very heartbroken over this. Well, anyway, Larry Bob, who, who put this out, he'd like to point out that my last video on 11.11 which uh, we're going to talk about soon because of the strange coincidental timing of uh, Mr. Musk's tweet at 11.11, which sort of exactly mirrored what I had put in my video two days prior. Well, he said that, you know, the Marvel movie comes out on 11.11, which has the introduction of Namor, which would be a representation of Poseidon. Interesting. Also interesting that that show that I did was... Um, it was uh, the six, 666 show. Weird. right? I didn't, obviously, there's always going to be, if I'm doing show after show, there's always going to be that. There's always going to be 666 comments at some point or 666 likes. That's why you got to hit that like again. And don't be weary, w worried or weirded out by hitting that 666. Otherwise, I'll be stuck at like 665 likes and comments all the time. So don't don't get too hung up in that. It's just the number of man, but it's a symbol of something greater, much greater. So yes, yeah, so this movie comes out on November 11th. That's really interesting. Very interesting for a lot of reasons. Now this is, this is where the show gets very strange, 
peculiar, out of this world like. For some reason, the lead character, Namor, um, he's kind of sporting the old feathered serpent, the uh, plumed serpent, the dragon, the uh, quasi quaddle, if you will. Very strange. Like, as in the movie, if you've seen the first movie, of course, the Black Panther, he had the, uh, the spirit animal power of the Black Panther. Well, well, this guy has got the spirit animal power of quasi quaddle uh, or cool cuckoo. I don't know how to pronounce the name, but there's many names for this. Just so you know, it's a symbol that we've been talking about on the show quite a bit. The feathered serpent, they actually called him this. Why do they call him the Feathered Serpent? The Feathered Serpent has to do with end times. It has to do with the end and the beginning, destruction and rebirth. Weird, weird, very strange indeed. So in the MCU, this is, uh, this is gonna be a thing. I don't know if this was in the cartoon or the uh, comics, but I do know that they are drawing a lot, a lot from this Mayan mythology which is strange, very strange. Now, The Onion made jokes about Cool Kakan. Uh, it's interesting. <laughs> a little while ago, where Pope Francis hosts the Feathered Serpent God as part of a deity exchange program. But even in comedy, we see something being revealed. Strange that the Pope also brought in Pachimama, Pachimama, you know, the Mayan goddess, kind of like their version of Mary, right? Which is Mary's, the, the version of other things, all of these things that have been played out since Isis and all of these things. They're kind of repackaged and repurposed, and now it's going to be in a, in a Marvel movie brought to you by the same people that have done terrible things and have made so much money and paid out the biggest fine in history and I cannot believe the stuff that I'm hearing today. Interesting. But it's almost like God's delivering us from the system. It's like at some point we're going to have to just check out, right? We're just going to have to check out. We're going to have to move on. But the, uh, the uh, symbolism here is quite intense, okay? Just to give you a little bit of uh, background, um, the serpent god Quasiquadal was worshipped by the Aztecs, the Toltecs, and the Mayans as Kul Kakan. Mayans. The Mayans, right? Same, same thing. The Pope, the Vatican. They had a whole, like, Anunnaki display <laughs> for Christmas a while ago. I've talked about that. I've talked about how the, the, the Mayan mythology has creeped its way into many, many avenues here. It's very strange and peculiar. The Pope actually hosted an interfaith meeting at like the oldest man-made temple on earth, uh, the ziggurat, right? Which is like an ancient Anunnaki temple, some say. So, you know, life, birth, redeath. But this was also the practice of sacrificing, uh, you know, humans. That's weird. That was kind of part of the thing. Sacrificing quasi quaddle and all this. They used to do that. The Mayans, they were nuts. Why is this now mainstream? Why is this my, when we have such great war and terrible things happening? When we all should be coming together. Why is this, ha why is this happening? Because there's nothing new under the sun. Just as it was back in the day in Egypt. It's going to be back in the day here again, and maybe in the future, unless we get this right. But the promised land is waiting those who do get it right. So I wouldn't get too stressed out. Do you know that symbol of that dragon eating its tail? You know, this is another, uh, this is another <laughs> description of it. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Meta. You know what it means in Hebrew, right? Who knows what it means in Hebrew? Let me see. I mean, it's written on the screen there. It's written on the screen there. I'm coming over to the live chat. Oh, wow. Will, thank you very much. Uncle Jacob, do you know about Queen Mary, the first Captain John War? They connected to the Golden Trident. Sir, I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up, Will. Thank you very much. Meta. 
there's that serpent eating its tail. And what's the deal with the name Meta? It means death. How about them apples? It's very strange, don't you think? We got, listen, we got like a thousand people here already. We uh, don't even have 400. We got all, now we have 400 likes. X out of the chat. Do me a favor. This was a hard show to put together. It's going to be worth it. Hit the like for me, especially if you like it right now. It's only going to get better, and it helps YouTube to recommend this to other um, people. It's the only way that the channel grows is by more people. Subscribe, people subscribing, that's like the best thing that can happen to this channel um, and to what we're doing here. So meta means death. It's ironic. You got that in, um, of course, the Marvel movie Wakanda Forever, which is coming out November 11th, where you got the, the plume dragon, quasi quaddle, cool Kakan, whatever name, and the practice of taking out humans for this god, which would be weird. Wouldn't it be weird if there were like aliens, like the stories in the Bible were true, that these, um, you know, these beings, these what they would call angels or these fallen angels, you got angels, you got demons. What if those were the words that were used from those that descended from the heavens and they're just aliens, you know, they're just uh, other creatures like, like the, uh, the uh, Nibiru mythology and the Anunnaki and all of these stories that have been, you know, spelled out on tablets you know, even before the scriptures were written, wouldn't it be something? The story of the flood. There's many stories of the flood. We're in the flood right now. You're going to see how this is all coming together. And it's just beautiful how it's playing out. Playing out in such a way that Larry Bob read my mind. Because I was doing the show, I was going to mention, um, you know, Black Adam as well. Of course, why wouldn't I mention it? I used to write for The Rock. That's right. Isn't that weird, little old me? I'm a nobody. Came from nothing. My mom was 18 when she had me. I, you know, very poor. My mom uh, had to, uh, you know, c clean toilets on top of working a, a job as a nurse and other things to, to make to make ends meet. My mom, who's still to this day working her her her, uh, her fingers to the bone, and she's, you know, she's 19 years older than me. She had me when she's like she got pregnant at 18. She had me when she's like 19, and she's still working so so very hard. Strange. I end up writing for World Wrestling. I wrote for The Rock. I know Dwayne, right? For, for like, you know, two years I was there. Very strange to see him do all this. So here's a connection to me. And then here now I'm talking about him playing Black Adam, which I got to tell you is very sus. Very sus for a lot of reasons. Mainly because, you know, he was given the powers by the uh, Egyptian gods. But I almost wonder if this story may have some other roots in it. Like, what if there's more to it? Like Larry Bob is saying, he's saying, look, he's a living god that has magic, okay? And all over his outfit, if you take a quick look at his outfit, I may have a picture and I'll show you. There, it looks like there's all like Egyptian symbols and it looks like there's all spells written all over it. I don't know if that's the case. It's a cool costume. But he says it sounds like, this, you know, Satan. And we know that Jesus is called the second Adam, right? The last Adam, not the black Adam, but, you know, it is what it is. He was a slave who was given these powers and uh, it's projected. Now, this is what really caught my attention. And you'll notice that lightning bolt smack dab in the middle of his chest, him and Shazam. They have that. And of course, you know, we saw Satan falling as lightning from heaven. But also Christ comes as lightning. So there's always two ways of looking at things, right? So if Satan's falling as lightning from heaven and Christ comes as lightning from heaven and Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, isn't it possible that that lightning was the enlightening of the truth which casts that devil out. It just ties all together, doesn't it? So this has been a, uh, like a passion project of, uh, of Dwayne's, The Rocks. He's been, I think, since like 2016 or something, this guy's been trying to put this show together. Not really doing that great, like it's got some pretty bad reviews. 
on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't think it's doing that great. I'm going to pro- I'm going to check it out obviously because it's always a kick for me to see people that I knew, people that I wrote for that took my words and put them out there. Even though I wasn't his main writer, I was um there was two writers on the show. It was me and another guy named Brian. But 60 million dollars for an opening. Now we know 60 is a very important number, right? Interesting. Talk about Aaron Judge's 60th hit. 60 was everywhere, right? We couldn't get away from 60 for a reason. For a reason. If you haven't seen any of those, go back and uh, and check it out. 60. Set to the throne, Mike Myers. Halloween, the boogeyman. So I, it's like if you don't want to look at it from the negative light and you want to, don't, you want to look at it from maybe more of a positive light, isn't it possible that... Let's see. Somebody's calling me. Maybe there's a problem. There's probably a problem, right? Let me see. Are we having a problem with the show, everybody? Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? I don't know why I'm getting a call from somebody. They're probably worried. You know, I'll just answer. Hi, John. I'm doing a live show. Is there a problem? Hello. Okay, I'm not going to pick this up. Can you all can you all hear me okay? Uh, because this is just, okay, sound is good here, and everything's working okay, right? Thank you, Jamie. I don't know why I got a call. Do me a favor. If I'm doing a show, guys, don't call me. Don't call me on um, FaceTime. Don't, don't FaceTime me. Don't, don't do anything because it stresses me out. <laughs> it does stress me out. All right, so let's get back to the show here. So 60 million projected. 60 million projected. 60. Six, zero, huge numbers. Big reason for that. Big reason for that. Speaking of wrestling, you know who else is coming out at the same time? We got Degeneration X. I find that strange, don't you? I find that strange. The anniversary. That's when I was there, Degeneration X days, when all of them. Yeah, I used to, I wrote for all of them. All of them. Triple H was like my main guy, by the way. He was like my main guy. But it's just weird how it's come, it's almost come like full circle. And you have your Degeneration X in the, uh, in the limelight again. Very interesting. Because they were known to be very perverse, very crass, very harsh, very, they were degenerates, right? And yet, at the same time this is happening, we have Elias returning to the WWE. Some people think he has a twin. Some people say it's him playing both roles. No one really knows. But it is ironic that, you know, here you have the story of these twin brothers, Elias and Ezekiel, very biblical names. Elias is one of the supposedly, we'll say, the spirit of Elias, the spirit of Elijah. It comes into the world and um, it's like a witness, if you will, wakes people up to the truth, kind of gets everybody ready. It's like John the Baptist, prepare the way for the Lord because Christ, the revelation of Christ, Christ is come in the flesh, is coming in the flesh. Erkame is going to be revealed. The truth, the kingdom of God is now get ready. Who warned you vipers? John would say when all the big wigs and stuff would come to him in the wilderness. He said, who warned you of the destruction to come? The destruction to come, which turned out to be the destruction of the temple. We're getting somewhere. Hit the like, because this is where it gets very cool. All right? If there is something that has been kind of on the show that I've talked about quite a bit, it is world leaders. And one world leader in particular, I have... um, I have a lot of videos on. <laughs> a lot of weird stuff connected to his birth. Born on a blood moon. I have a whole video called The Trump Paradox. You should check it out if you haven't seen it because it is um, it is something else. But if you remember a couple of years ago, there was a massive and terrifying God Emperor Trump presiding over a, per- a parade in Italy. And it was spooky looking. It really was. Now, I compared Trump to Nebuchadnezzar many times. 
Remember I had a weird dream, right? Let me show you a picture of the dream so you know that I'm not messing up a story. This is actually more like three years ago. Um, you'll see Trump looking down at a picture of himself in a coffin and with the words on the thumbnail, will they try to fake it? Revelation's fatal head wound revealed. Weird, right? Because in that video, I expressed the dream that I had had. You can go back and you can go back and watch it uh, where I had there was a uh, you know, Trump was he had passed away and he was in a coffin that was covered in sea moss, you know, swamp moss. And then on the left hand side, he was laughing and he was getting a kick out of it. And in the video I shared, I felt like it was going to look like he was either going to die or politically die which is what we figured out by the next show because of the swamp moss. So it was going to look like he lost all power and it was going to look like he was done, right? So I compared him to Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, who in an instant, God said, you know what? It went to your head. I gave you everything. I brought you here. You said you believed in me, but you made it all about you. You got people to worship you with your golden statue. Does this sound like somebody we know? So I've expressed Nebuchadnezzar's story time and time again. And how in an instant, his kingdom would be lopped off. Told everybody this before that thing that happened in January. Told everybody, don't go. Don't follow after all this nonsense. Like It's like a, a honeypot. It's a, it was a trap. It was a setup. And man, was it a setup, huh? I'm not saying who set up what. But what I'm saying is people fell for it. People did the wrong thing. And, and because of it, everybody else is paying the price. You see how that works? That's why we got to work together. We got to do the right thing. We got to always do the right thing. We can't be like the, uh, the bad guy. We got to do the right thing. They picture him. I just did a show about this where I did my Christopher Walken impersonation where he just shared this video about how he's going to come and he's going to devour everybody. Interesting. Very interesting. Trump the God Emperor. Just very all of this stuff to me is so incredibly important. Now, this is a picture of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, after he lost everything, that doesn't look like Donald Trump. He's not really crawling on his feet. He's still strong. A lot of people are worried about what's going to happen to him. They say that, you know, they're going to they're going to drop the hammer on him and he's going to end up, you know, incarcerated or whatever else. But I don't know. I don't know about all that. I don't know about all. See, that's the thing that's tricky about this is that I can see so clearly where I think things are going, but I don't know if it's like a good thing or a really, really bad thing. And that's the trick. So what you do is you, you then go to the next level. You judge a tree by its fruit. You don't just listen to the words. You judge by the actions, by the words and the deeds. Nebuchadnezzar, he became a beast after he was cut down, a beast, like a lion, a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now, you do know in the book of Revelation, I want to let you know, that if you're doing the right thing by God and everything else, you know that angel of death that passes over you, that passes over you. There's, it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. It doesn't mean it's not going to be, it's going to be scary. It's definitely going to be scary when the plagues of Egypt hit the land. And I have plenty of shows on Egypt and everything else. Years ago, I said that they were coming. I'm going to show you that in a second. But it was to get everybody ready so that when we're in that final plague, you know, the death of the firstborn, which is very symbolic of getting rid of your carnal nature. This the twins again. It's the first idea of you, that firstborn in Egypt of everything, the animals, the insects, the firstborn of everything, stri stricken down. But the firstborn of Israel, they're okay. It's a picture of this nature that we, that was birthed in Egypt, in Babylon, in Sodom. This is what the scriptures talk about. They talk about how our Lord and Savior was crucified there, Sodom, in Egypt. Which is weird because he was actually literally crucified at Golgotha. But the scripture in another place says Sodom and Egypt. It's very weird because we know that Golgotha is the place of the skull. So we really know that Christ, the truth of God, was, was put to death in our thinking. We were crucified with Christ. But now Christ begins to rise again. And the lion is going to devour whom it may devour. That's why we got to be on our guard. we got to be okay. 
Now, here's weird. The resurrection is coming. Now, you know, if you've watched the story of, um, of uh, the Donald, President Trump, the story has been played out. You know, he's called himself the chosen one. He's had people that have said, you're the Mashiach. People believe this rabbis and, you know, top donors. They've had secret recordings and everything else. He's the guy that moved everything to Jerusalem, right? He, he, the embassy. It was a big deal. It's a big deal. Well, now he's going to become, my buddy Ernie told me this. I added this last minute talking to him. Trump Organization 2. 2. Which is weird because Nebuchadnezzar is Nebuchadnezzar too. So I just found that strange. But supposedly this is to dodge some kind of a fraud case. I don't know. I don't know. But it's weird because it would be like, here's the sequel. This is the thing that's coming next. This is the thing that I've said for years in the live chat. If you've been watching for more than a year or two. Will you let everybody know? Will you let everybody know? Yes, he's been saying this was going to happen. It was going to look like he was going to lose everything. It was going to look like everything was going to be terrible and everything was going to turn against him. Everybody loves an underdog story. And that story's happening everywhere. Happened to uh, over to Pond, uh, Boris, Boris. You know, every time I hear the name Boris, I think of a pig. You know, boar. Don't waste your, you know, cast your pearls before swine. Happened to him. Happened to a lot of people, Right? Happening right now to, uh, you know, Kanye. Happening right now to him, supposedly. Happened to him, supposedly. Everybody getting kicked off a of platform. It's like, oh, oh. So then they're going to be our heroes. They're going to be our heroes, which is what I said in my video on October 13th. There's a, a, a quick capture of it, ironically, that that came out, where I said, they're your heroes, people. The three of them, the three amigos. Just very strange. If you haven't seen that video on 11.11, you should check it out. If not for the fact that it's a really great video and very, very cool. But also for the fact that um, <laughs> right afterwards, like a couple of days later, Elon actually tweeted out a picture of the three musketeers. I didn't go into detail on this. If you, if you want, you can check out my, la my last show on this. But you'll notice there's a picture of X, the chai. It's a, um, it's a symbol for Christ, which looks a lot like those three swords coming together, doesn't it? Which is something that I've talked about on the show earlier. It's a picture of Christ. Very strange. Stranger still was the synchronicity, huh, at Elon Musk? The synchronicity, 1111. He tweeted that out at 1111, my time, my time. So when everybody was sending me, oh, wow, he, you know, look, he just, he just did what you were talking about. He just put this out. But then to find out that it was done at 1111, my time, that, like, that, what, that's just like, that's just weird. That's like a lot of things coming together. Now, you know, he's he's tweeted out pictures of Jacob wrestling the angel. He's tweeted out, you know, I talked about him coming up with like some kind of a peace plan, like he would be the guy. And then he comes out with a peace plan. It looks to me like the more I'm I'm watching him on Twitter. You remember, this guy's an earth shaker. He's one of the most powerful people on the planet. It looks to me he's saying some really nice things lately. Things like he doesn't want to let people down. Um, he just posted a picture out about general, generational curses, you know, and, uh, and it looked like, you know, you got the grandfather and then the father and then you have the son and then he has his kids and he was holding a shield. And I just thought, wow, that's really great because that's what we do is, is we're formed in the dust of this earth. And dust in scripture is dead flesh. It's imagination. It's lies. It's compared to idolatry. When people sin, they throw dust on their head. It's basically like when you do the wrong thing, you beat yourself up. It's uncomfortable. You put on sackcloth and ashes. It's no fun, right? You, you, uh, you mourn that you're not a better person, a better child of God. But it seems like, I mean, you don't see other people like that doing it. You don't see... You see a lot of hate going on. I don't see Kanye putting out positive messages.
But the fact that he he tweeted this out at 11.11, hey, let's hope he's watching. It was my prayer a long time ago that world leaders would watch. And it's not too far-fetched to think that that's the case. Right? It's not that far-fetched. And it's not that far-fetched to think that I would have a lot of Nicodemuses that might come to me in the midst of the night and not let anybody know. Pharaoh, he had trouble with a dream. He was stressed out about it. And the dream had to do with seven years, right? Seven-year famine. We're in a seven-year famine. We're in a famine right now. It's, and it's starting to get bad, right? <sighs> Pharaoh wanted someone to interpret that dream for him, but he couldn't find anybody in his, in his, in his, his area. He couldn't find anybody. But he heard of this guy who was in prison. Hey, I hear this guy interprets dreams. He did a show with Marfugal News and Marfugal TV. And for whatever reason, Pharaoh brings him. He says, bring him to me. And Joseph, this little guy, this guy who was the weakest and probably the, uh, the you know, he would look like the lamest of all the brothers of Jesse's kids. You know, Jesse was surely like, surely, Samuel, you're going to anoint all my uh, strong boys that are all in the army, right? Not the runt that's out taking care of the, uh, you know, all he cares about is those animals that he takes care of. All he cares about is his flock. But Joseph, 18 years old, he's anointed as king. Then what happens? His brothers, they throw him in a pit. And they sold into slavery. And everywhere he goes, though, because he serves the living God, everywhere he went, he would always rise above. He would always do better. There was nothing, nothing that could hold him back, nothing that could stop him. Ends up in prison because, of course, he had that gift on him that Potiphar's wife, when he worked for Potiphar, who he loved Potiphar. He was a slave. You know, like, we're, you know, people say, oh, well, we're slaves, too, to debt. We're slaves to the system. We got to worry, right? You got to do things what they say or else. That's, just, that's not freedom, people, right? And Joseph, he probably lived a good life, probably had, probably had quite a bit because Potiphar was pretty, pretty well to do, but he wasn't free. And Potiphar's wife, when, when she came at him and he didn't want to do anything because he loved Potiphar, she ended up lying about him and he ended up in prison in prison. And in prison, a certain set of events happened where Pharaoh's wine bibber and uh, baker were sent there. They both had dreams. Joseph gave the revelation and the interpretation of the dream. And it turned out to be true. The wine bibber, who's next to Pharaoh all the time, knew about Joseph, remember Joseph, when Pharaoh had this dream, calls Joseph there. Joseph interprets the dream, says, you need to store up your treasure. Like I've been telling everybody on the channel for a long time, you need to store up your treasure. You need to store, put, put the wheat in the storehouse. Get yourself right with the Lord. Get ready because the famine's coming. That's what he told, that's what he told Pharaoh. Pharaoh, this powerful man to a prisoner, locked away. That is, you know, if it was today and like someone you knew was in prison, you'd probably think worse of him, think he's a bad guy because the system says so. You probably wouldn't think great of him. You know, he probably had a reputation for being in jail. Next thing you know, He's running the whole world. That's the power of God. God, the power of God doesn't, he doesn't, if, if, he, if he brought power to someone who already had power, they wouldn't, it would be like Nebuchadnezzar. It's like, I, I did this. I did this. Look at me. I'm so great. Look at what I've done. But that's not the way God works. It has to be inexplicable. So it's not a strange thing to think that a great person in the world, a pharaoh, if you will. I'm not saying he's a pharaoh. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm not saying he's a good guy. I don't know the man's heart. I don't know. I can only hope and uh, pray that we have somebody in the ranks who cares, who's going to work hard for us, who's going to do the right thing, even in the face of adversity. It's spooky. He's been, uh, he's gotten some threats, but at 11, 11, come on, come on. This is all getting too, too strange for me. This is the video, by the way, that I was talking about. Okay. And you notice over there on the side, you got, um, Mr. Green man himself, uh, the, the, uh, the green horse of the apocalypse himself. He's, uh, he's over there. We're going to get to him in a second. Alyssa sent something to me. Uh, about him. He was doing some kind of a um, 
some kind of a weird uh, like green screen thing. Here, I'll just show you. Uh, is he the green horse of the apocalypse? Because, of course, he always dresses in green. You see the trident. That's the uh, the trident is the symbol, right? If you take blue and yellow and you put it together, tell me in the live chat, what color do you get? That's right. I think you get green. I don't know. You'd have to ask my daughter Shiloh. She's the, uh, she's the artist of the bunch. But is he the green horse of the apocalypse? Green. His name means green. Green world ruler. It's pretty interesting. Now, so he does this, he does this like event that was broadcast. He was broadcast as a hologram. And this is the shirt he was wearing. Come to the dark side. I mean, that's weird. Assimilate or die. Come to the dark side. Assimilate or die. It's weird. It's just strange. But once again, isn't life just like a movie? Isn't this what we're going through right now? Isn't everything just so strange? Isn't it? It really is. I think so, at least. Strange. Strange. But not as strange as this. Okay, so let's talk about the X app a little bit. This is going to be a big deal. Um... It sounds like it would be a really cool thing. A lot of people are saying, oh, it's going to be the, it, that's going to be the mark. Everything's the mark of the beast to everybody. It's this, it's that, it's the other thing. And yet I've said flat out for many years, go watch my shows on this. Go, go to jacobisrael.com right there, right there, right there. Uh, and subscribe to my website, read my videos about the antichrist and, and find out, you know, it's not what you think. There, there will be a literal representation in it, but don't think for a second that you don't have that Antichrist, as John said, already in the world, probably in you, tormenting you, messing with you. The devil tempts us the same way Jesus was tempted, same way. We don't see a little devil, you know, snake coming up and talking to us, but we hear it in our head all the time. This is why we must test the spirits. You want to rule and reign with Christ? This is what it means. Don't listen to negativity. Don't listen to lies in your head. Don't think the worst about people. I can't tell you how many times I'll be um, emailing somebody back or encouraging somebody or trying to encourage somebody, and they take it the entire, the wrong way completely. And, uh, and then they get angry, and then they attack me because there's a voice in their head trying to get them not to listen to the voice of encouragement and hope and peace. That's the way the devil works. X marks the spot. X marks the spot. The everything app. X is also, um, if you look what X up, it's very simple. It means Christ. It's the abbreviation of Christ. Now, I don't know if, if Elon knew this. He's a smart guy, so he probably had some idea. I'm not saying it's the Christ app, but what I'm saying is everything is going to have a literal representation, something that we can point to and say, you see, we're in a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual war. It's about being set free from Egypt. It's about being set free from the lies. It's about judgment of God coming on the land because that's what 60 is. That's what 60 is, people. It's correction. It's judgment. 60. That's what it is. But God makes everything right. So it's sometimes just an X, used alone. This is the case for Chai, the abbreviation of Christ. And that's where you get x miss from. I remember when I was working at, um, at a, you know, number one Christian network in the world. It's huge. And I was their head writer and, like, head producer. It was weird, right? Little old me, once again. How does that happen? And then, uh, and then I end up selling mattresses, knowing that one day all of you would be here. And then here you are. That's faith. That's destiny. That's purpose. God purposed it. It's not me, lest I should boast. I could say, oh, it's me. I was selling mattresses, just doing these videos, knowing one day it would happen. Writing my essays, writing my poetry, just doing it, trying to feed the flock. I can go back and show you videos where I had 500 subscribers. And I was talking to the speckled sheep that I would have in the future. One day. And here we all are. All of us with our, our issues and our... our um, 
our hang-ups and our, our past and our pains and our suffering and our struggle. And yet here we are, strong, coming together, facing the storm, facing the red wave that's coming. Wild. Oh, this is wild. So, seeing this X app is a pretty interesting thing. Seeing that we have the, I think it's the last blood moon of 2022. That's happening on... <laughs> <laughs> what day is it happening on? Tell me, I'm going to leave it up to you. I want a little, uh, I want I want people to uh, get involved here. We have almost 2,000 people watching and half of you have hit the like button. Do me a favor if you haven't, I'm just asking you to do something nice for me. Just X out a chat for a second as I'm talking. Hit that like. Let's get more people here because the end of the show is always the best part of the show and it's the part that really gets you to think, hmm, I better ask for the truth no matter what the cost because God is working in such a mighty, miraculous way. It can't be anything but the Lord at this point. It can't be anything but the Lord at this point. Election Day, Lunar Eclipse. Wow. Wow. Blood Moon. And you know that this Election Day... It's going to be very interesting. They're calling it the, uh, the, you know, the red wave that's coming. Very strange, this red wave. This is what everybody's saying. You know, beware, a red wave is coming. I saw that. I immediately thought of Moses and the Red Sea. I thought of the Red Sea. I thought of this. Because I was talking earlier about how the devil will, uh, you know, will manipulate you and lie to you and everything else. And now whether the devil is a, a literal being, I think it's some kind of an, you know, extra dimensional being or some kind of an entity, something that's, you know, there to be our adversary, to get us to, uh, you know, to overcome. Because God has a reason for everything. God creates the waster and the destroyer to waste and destroy. But when he whispers in your ear, a red nuclear wave is coming. The bottom part is me. When all hope seems lost for God's people, Moses be like this. That's where we are right now in the story. And that's why I was so excited to come to you. We've had the plagues. Right? Now we're starting to leave the system. A lot of people don't. They don't work for the system anymore. They don't have the jobs to join. People are, are moving to different areas. People are doing things that they've never done before. But as we're trying to just stay ahead of the game and not be overrun by the Egyptians that seem to be coming to kill Israel, that would be like the Jews today, we'll say. But it's not. Because, you know, Israel, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Jewish. I mean, not that I know of. Maybe maybe back in the day, I never met my father. I don't know the lineage. Maybe I do. But I would be considered a Gentile, like Zerubbabel. <laughs> we talked about him recently on the show. The, or, or, or the witnesses of God, right? So we're all the witnesses of God. It doesn't. You don't have to literally have, because you could possibly have that blood running through you anyway, because we've been scattered. But there's a gathering together. Moses comes to draw people out. Moses, he didn't do everything right. He was a meatball, right? He made mistakes. He didn't even see the promised land. He just helped lead people out. It was Joshua, Yahshua. It was Christ that brought him into the promised land. And we're at the point of the story right now where it looks like we're going to be faced with coming in 2023. I've been telling everybody, just hold on. Just get through to 2024, and I think there's going to be something. I think that, I think that um, at that point in time, we may start to see a new day. People are worried. With that announcement about the children at school, I was like, come on! It's like so corrupt. It's so in your face. The red wave, it's coming. The red wave, it's coming. What am I going to do? Well, I'll have to homeschool, right? Got to get out of the system. God's trying to bring us out of the system. And yet, Moses makes a way. 
we're at that point of the story where it's going to seem like all hope is lost. We're at the point of the story where we're going to be hunted down. But Moses makes a way. God makes a way. God makes a way. I've been talking about this for years. This is probably some, something like three years ago, right there. The plagues of Egypt tells what com what's coming next. Get your hands clean. Go back and watch these shows. You see in the eye right there, it's a little, uh, it's a little, it's a little virus of the crown. This is when it very first, the first cases started to come out. And I said, this makes so much sense as to what's coming. And man, <laughs> it did not, uh, it didn't disappoint, if you will. You'll notice, by the way, the, uh, the horns that the devil has. Um, also, the, the devil carries that trident, Poseidon, sea god, Namor. I'm going to get there. Seed and Glad actually put this out about the horns in Revelation. Horns equal the uh, leaders, he says. Yeah, that's true. Oh, by the way, that's a, that's a, uh, <laughs> that was me yesterday at the gym. He was saying, don't be deceived. And I thought it would be funny to shoot a picture of me wearing the Teach Me the Truth shirt. I, it's a it's a cool tank top. You should get the tank top too. All the descriptions are in the link below. But um, interesting, interesting, because what if a flood is coming? In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, on the seventeenth day of the month, the springs of the great deep burst forth, and the floodgates of heaven were open. Now, does this mean there's going to be a tsunami, or a soon? Am I? Because the floodgates of heaven being opened would have more to do with the truth of God being poured out. Because if you come to me, God says, if you come to me, if you, if you pray to me, if you seek me early, I will open up the floodgates of heaven. I will bless you with the truth. Teach me the truth, right? Teach me the truth, no matter what the cost. If you do this, God is going to open up those floodgates. If you prepare the ark, he'll get rid of all the wickedness around you. And perhaps that's going to happen in the world literally too. Elon had that tweet, that 7-Eleven tweet, which I thought was very interesting. This one, though, was something that I couldn't get away from. Uh, yeah, not a great thing. He's taking a lot of heat for this, old Mr. Kanye. Taking a lot of heat for it. People are defending him, which I find so strange. I've talked about him on the show. I said, he's the guy. He's the guy. If there was ever the guy that would be like the picture-perfect guy to play the part of that false guy, it would be him. Had a Bible written with his name. His name replaced everything. His commercial out for his, his sneakers. Thank you, Jesus. Changed his name to Light. And guess who he wants to, yeah, he has a big problem with them. Lumps them all in. Did a Pierce Morgan interview. He says, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sorry for the things that I said. I'm not sorry. But then he basically said, no, it's just the people that have wronged me. So why don't you not lump it into a category of people that the system is now going to come after? Do you see how the story is playing out? That's Moses' day. We're going to get them. We're going to get them. See what I mean? Israel, the Jews. We're going to go. It's DEFCON 3. And what do they do? They run. And they're facing that gigantic red wave that, by the way, ends up crashing and destroying who? The enemies of Israel. That's why I can't say that it's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know. I just pray it's a good thing. I wish I knew. Wish I knew. I feel like it's not. I feel like it's not. Now this is your, you know, look, look at him. Look at his mouth guard. Balenciago. Bale. In Siaga. Bale in Siaga. He's wearing that hat 2023, and then he's got another hat 2024. So, of course, we know that's going to be big. But this is your guy. 
Jesus is king. He did, a, he, did uh, he walked on water. He did signs, miracles, and wonders. I've covered this. I said he would be the guy long before when he was wearing the witchcraft hat. I'm sorry, the M-A-G-A hat. But if you don't put the periods in between, that's what it means in Latin, witchcraft. The highest, the highest, the most exalted in, uh, in Satanism. That's what it is. It comes from Simon Magus, the magician. Black Adam, magic powers. The day that we're in. Small group of people. But Joel's army is strong, man. And they stand up. They run before them. It's the Garden of Eden. Before us is as the Garden of Eden people. Behind us is a desert wasteland. What we're leaving behind us, and it probably will be, we probably will see a desert wasteland in the land too if things continue to go the way they're going. But before us, before those, the children of God, that God is leading out, it's as the Garden of Eden. Balenciago. Jesus. You know, they say all the right things. Supposedly. You know what they call Balenciago? The master of us all. Interesting, right? Not as interesting as uh, their weird fashion show from hell. Did anybody see this? Let me pull this up. Take a look at this. Wow, we got over 2,000 people watching. Let me mute this. So, So just that's their last fashion show. Look at this. Look at this. This is the mouthpiece he's wearing. This is art? It looks like a fashion show in the pits of hell. Mud, mire. That is the emotional state of everybody that does not have the light of the Lord in their heart. Because there's no light there. Look at them. He's a man for the people. He's a man. This is just freaking weird. (laughs) I'm sorry. Just weird. And this is what he's got as his mouthpiece. Everybody's just dirty and grimy and sad. Miserable. Ugh. And this is what counts as high fashion. This is the world that we are in. This is the world that I don't want to be a part of anymore. I don't know about you. It makes me sad. This is not healthy. This is not joyous. This is not empowering. This, I dare say, is not art. This is a travesty. What's happening in the world today is a travesty. I don't even know if I saw this to you. Let me show you again. You probably didn't even see it. You can tell I'm off my game. I haven't done a live show in a while. Just look at this. People are, I mean, really people. This is what I was talking about. Just disturbing 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 Eh, what are you going to do what are you going to do so years ago I said yeah 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 I said yeah he's born again but let's talk about the truth this is from years ago it says two years but it's almost like three his performances had the all seeing eye of course and ironically his uh, Jesus is King album that picture is taken in a um, in the depths of the earth. It's like uh, it was like a cave in beneath the ground. But it's a very Masonic picture, and it also is um, ironically connected to Jacob, which is very weird. Now this is where it gets even weirder. So you remember, yay, he did uh, an opera. You remember, he was very good friends with Trump. He still kind of, I guess, thinks he's all right. 
big supporter of him. Against all, you know, went on Tucker Carlson talking about this, right? These are the heroes. His very first play was called, uh, it was an opera, and it wasn't good. I mean, I didn't think it was good. Maybe it was. I didn't get it. I think the guy is probably a musical genius. I don't know. I think I like some of his music, right? I don't like what um, he's, I don't like what I'm seeing. But it's very telling if the very first opera you do is called Nebuchadnezzar. Now, who does that sound like to you? Nebuchadnezzar II. Don't you find that strange? The connection between the two is just, it's uncanny. His very first opera. And then he followed it with an opera about Mary. There you go, Queen of Heaven. Nebuchadnezzar, who became a beast. On Twitter... Uh, Nicola 3 tweeted this out and I wrote are you comparing Trump to a beast for his age he does look much younger God bring correction and judgment to wickedness in this world so tired of fake news and hate it's just weird that he would put that picture out weird whole thing is weird but does that mean that he is going to be you know, terrible and ferocious? Does that mean they're going to make it look like they're going to lock him up? Causing quite a stir? Well, I say don't fall for it. Do the right thing. You got to do the right thing. With all of this, we'll say, troubling news, good old Tammy shared something probably saw it before a lot of other people did shared this the pillars of creation i've never seen it this way but it looked like the hand of god we'll say a cloud the size of a fist that's elijah people and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said behold there arises a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand And he said, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot, get down, because the rain isn't going to stop you. And the rain has come. The rain has come. The little cloud that comes out of the sea, just to give you a little insight into Revelation, witnesses of God are clouds. We're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. It's a picture. You kind of dwell, the cloud dwells right between heaven and earth. There are people that serve God that dwell spiritually right between heaven and earth. And then they sometimes they rain down on those that are spiritually below them. We'll say, not below them, but you get what I'm saying, that are not... A little cloud comes out of the sea, the size of a hand, and it turns into a great, great storm. So Ahab better prepare his chariot and get out of the way. Better get... Better get out of here. Then, of course, Jezebel, his wife, is going to come after. We may see a lot of that happening in the actual world. X marks the spot, after all. The X app. We're smack dab in the middle of this, people. We got just a couple more years to go till the next eclipse. I said back in 2016, maybe 2015 talked about this the judgment that was coming to this country smack dab in the middle of that little eclipse line that little where they cross sect in Cairo Carbondale it's also known as Little Egypt if there isn't more a clear picture of judgment coming Christ coming because that's what that X means Christ, the X. Two ways of looking at everything. Judgment, correction, deliverance. But now I say correction will be coming to this system. Because I have a feeling that God's hand and God's support that he's supported this system with, he's put up with it long enough, I think he's pulling it away. And why do I think this? 
Well, because of mistrust resigning after six turbulent weeks in office. We got the six everywhere. The six, six, six. My 11-11 show six, six, six video. On the seventh day, God rests. That's what's coming. So Liz Truss has resigned. I'm not going to get too political. But I am going to show you what Elizabeth means. It means an oath of God. God's satisfaction and providence and protection. Oath. I gave you an oath. Do you know what a truss is? It's a support framework. It holds things up. Holds up a roof or a bridge. It's a steel beam that holds up a bridge. It's called a truss. Now, there are other kinds of truss, trusses, too. They even have, like, a truss for, uh, they, you know, if you got a hernia, they give you a truss. It's a support. God's support and satisfaction with this system. After six weeks, after six, maybe 6,000 years, it's gone. I'm done. And just like we see President Trump coming back into power and prominence, more popular than ever, as if maybe it was done on purpose. I'm not saying it was, but wow, that would be like the Wizard of Oz or something, right? Pay no attention to the man behind him. Look at the moves. Starting truth social. He does lie. Everybody lies, according to scripture. Every man, let God be true. Just quite an interesting name for a social network where I promise you it will not be filled with all truth. But it is what it is. You know, they actually said that the uh, Simpsons predicted um, trust stepping down too, by the way. I didn't. Uh, I don't know if you know this. Trust has become the shortest serving prime minister after only 40 years. Four days, <laughs> that's symbolic, because of course 40 is time in a wilderness, 40 is a time of pregnancy. Simpsons seem to predict a lot, maybe they got the old, uh, maybe they got the old time machine, huh? And now one thing is, here's another guy who uh, possibly back in power again. So strange, Borish, John's son. John, who comes before Christ, Boris, Boris. Netanyahu may be back in power again, I hear. All these people that supposedly everything was turned against them, and they lost everything. Seems like everything's going to be restored. Now, is it restored because God is restoring it? That would be wonderful. That's why I always try to... I, I get... Sometimes attacked from people on both sides saying that you support them, you don't support them. I don't know what to do. I'm just prognosticating. Some would make a joke and say, oh, you're just a simple soothsayer. I'm not any of that stuff. I'm just a, I'm just a writer. Just looking at things the way they are and I just think, I think there's something to it. You know, I really do. I think it all started back here for a lot of you started for me a lot earlier. But I mean, we're moving on to some pretty interesting days, people. We're moving on to some pretty interesting days. Almost as interesting as what Elon tweeted out just the other day. A lot of people jumped on this really quick. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. I probably should have looked it up. Vox Pupoli. <laughs> Vox Dia. It's the voice of the people, the voice of God. That's what it means. Um, and it comes from, this is why people should do a little research. It comes from, you know, it's kind of like the judgment of uh, whole kingdoms. And in other words, the people should choose who rules over them and all that stuff. But it's not always the best thing. It's also a, uh, a game where you go around killing a bunch of werewolves, <laughs> which I think is very appropriate because this world is probably filled with werewolves and uh, vampires, huh? I don't know. I don't know, spiritually speaking, there are a lot of people that suck the life out of people, you know? Hey, listen, 
let me come on over to the uh, the live chat, and uh, let me just make sure that everything is uh, is uh, good with you all. You know, I'm very grateful for all of you. We got over two thousand people here. This is great. And um, half of you hit the like. I um, encourage the other half to do the same. I hope that this show has touched you. I hope it's encouraged you. And um, I want to leave you with this word from Isaiah 60, which is really going to, um, I think it's going to encourage you a lot. Just one of these things, people, where, you know, if you look at the world and you look at how things are, it's easy to forget that God has a plan even though 60 means judgment, you know, like it means big time correction. Not the best thing, right? Isaiah 60 means arise and shine because your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. You see the darkness that was at that Balenciaga concert? <laughs> that Balenciaga fashion show? Did you see that darkness, that thick darkness over the people? But I promise you, the Lord is rising upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light because Jesus is the light of the world, but he also said you're the light of the world. Think about that for a second. Nations, leaders will come to your light, kings to the brightness of your dawn. Who's to say that the Elon Musk of the world aren't Maybe DMing you on Twitter or Facebook or wherever. Just because they know that you got something special. That the spirit of the living God is within you, lifting you up. So I want you to lift up your eyes and look around you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons will come from afar. Your daughters are carried on the hip. Then you will look and you will be radiant. Your heart will throb and it will swell with joy. Doesn't that sound great? Because the wealth of the seas will be brought to you, the wealth of the wicked. Just like when Israel left Egypt, they carried the wealth and riches of Egypt with them. God's going to take care of you. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels. Gold and incense. And proclaiming the praise of the Lord. Flocks will be gathered to you. Rams will serve you. They'll be accepted as an offering on my temple, and I will adorn my glorious temple. Who are these that fly along the clouds like doves to their nests? Surely the islands look to me. In the lead are the ships of Tarshish. Bring your children from afar with silver and gold to honor your God, the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. For he's endowed, he's endowed every one of you with splendor. And I promise you, you may have lost everything. But Isaiah says in chapter 60, foreigners will rebuild your walls and kings will serve you. In anger, I struck you. But in favor, I will show compassion. Your gates will always stand open. They'll never be shut day or night so that people may bring you the wealth of the nations. Their kings led in triumphal procession for the nation or kingdom that will not serve you because you're serving God and the kingdom of God is all that matters. If they don't serve you, they will perish. They'll be utterly ruined. The glory of Lebanon, Lebanon will come to you, the juniper, the fir tree, the cypress, to adorn my sanctuary. I'll glorify the place for my feet. That's us. The children of your oppressors will come before you and bow. All who despise you will bow down at your feet and will call you to the city of the Lord. Will call you the city of the Lord. They'll call you Zion, the Holy One of Israel. The wicked, the terrible, the powerful. It will be inexplicable, but it will happen because God can make it happen. Although you've been forsaken and you've been hated with no one traveling through, I will make you an everlasting pride and a joy to all generations. You will drink the milk of nations and be nursed at royal breasts. Then you 
will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. You know, the one I'm always talking about. Instead of bronze, I'll give you gold. And silver in place of iron. Instead of wood, I'll bring you bronze and iron in place of stones. I will make peace your governor and well-being your ruler. No longer will violence be heard in your land, no ruin nor destruction within your borders, but you will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The sun will no more be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you, for the Lord himself will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set again, and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light. Your days of sorrow are coming to an end. Then all your people will be righteous, and they will possess the land forever. They are the shoot I have planted, the work of my hands, for the display of my splendor. The least of you will become a thousand, the smallest a mighty nation. I am the Lord. In its time, I'm going to do it swiftly. Swiftly, people. We may seem small, but we had to be. We may seem heartbroken and lost, betrayed, downtrodden. But we had to be. He corrected us. We've repented. We're trying to do better. We're seeking God. We're loving. We're forgiving. We're being that light. God promised us. He sent that rainbow. Remember? I said the rainbow was coming. Everybody was scared about the virus of the crown. I said the rainbow's coming to the ark. And then a literal rainbow came to the literal Ipswich um, Noah's Ark in, uh, in England three days later. Have faith, people. Do me a favor. Like the video, comment, go into the links. If you go below, you can see the description of the video. You can go. There are links down there. You can get a copy of The Calling. So that's 900 reviews for just a paperback alone. A lot of people love the book. Please get the book. You can get yourself a copy of, uh, of, of the shirt. Get a copy of the shirt. Yeah, that's a good one. Get, get yourself a shirt. I have a bunch of them. There's a whole website there. Subscribe to my um, my channel. My patrons, thank you very much. I've been sharing my um, I've been sharing stuff there a lot more. Like I'm doing more um, because I appreciate I appreciate what people are doing. And um, there's a link there too. So have the best day ever. I love you. Sorry for the issues earlier today. I don't know what it was. I just had to update my computer. <laughs> That's usually what it is. It's nothing nefarious. Everybody wants to say, oh, it's, it's them, it's them. It's, it was probably just me. I just didn't update my computer. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.